Classically or traditionally, meteorites are divided in a large set of groups. And the basis for this classification is their bulk element composition, their isotope composition, but also their petrography, which means what components and what abundances do these components occur in the different groups of meteorites. So components such as CEIs, chondrules, matrix, opaque phases, and so on. Or maybe there aren't these kind of components. Maybe the parent body from which these meteorites originate were differentiated. And there was an iron core. And then the iron core, of course, does not have any silicate rocks. So then this meteorite would not have any of these components. Now, over the past years and decades, a large number of classification schemes were published by people like Kraut or Weisberg or Bischoff and so on. And I took all these classification schemes to produce one single scheme here. And this one has a sort of um, six-step classification tree here. So it starts with the parent body. So was this was the parent body primitive? Was it um, differentiated or something like this? Then there's the superclass, then there's a class, a clan, a group, and a subgroup. And I'll go through these starting with the parent body. So there are three different types of parent bodies. And first are the undifferentiated parent bodies. So this means these objects, these meteorites, these asteroids, contain components as they are formed most likely in the solar system or in case of pre-solar grains even before then. So when we look at these kind of primitive chondrites, as they are also called chondrites and they are primitive, um, and study their components, we study the protoplanetary disk and the processes within this disk. The chondrites are then subdivided into the carbonaceous chondrites, ordinary anthracite chondrites, and then there are also the R, the Rumorutis, and the Kakangaris. So these abbreviations are all explained here to the left. Now the carbonaceous chondrites contain the very important group of CI chondrites, which have about the same element composition as the sun, which means that we can in the lab study the, um, the entire composition of our solar system, assuming the sun is representative of the solar system, and so then also the CI chondrites, which is also the reason CI chondrites are used as a reference in geochemistry. And for the clans, there is the CM and CO clan, which contains the CM and CO chondrites. Now, a clan means that there are certain um, genetic relationships or similarities, at least similarities, like CM and CO have very small chondrules, for example. Now, there are also the CV and CK clan with these, um, these chondrites then, and the CV are further subdivided in a reduced class and then also to oxidized class here. And finally, the CR clan um, with three subgroups contain the CB chondrites, which are also further subdivided. Um, but I'm, I'm not going into all the many details here. This is just really a rough outline about classification. Now, the carbonaceous chondrites, they always have this C, which stands for carbonaceous, followed by, for example, an O. Now, the second letter here means the type meteorite, which are all shown here to the left. So, for example, in case of CO chondrites, this would be Orno, or CI chondrites, this would be Ivuna, and so on. The one exception here is the CH chondrites, in which case H stands for high iron. And this is uh, similar to the ordinary chondrites, which have the H for high iron, L for low iron, and LL, which stands for low iron, low metal. And the same sub um, classification is present in enzyme corners, high iron and low iron. And as the name says, one has a high iron, the other has a low iron. So this is the, the main difference here. Now this is all for the undifferentiated chondrites. Let's go on to the intermediate ones. Um, these are also called primitive achondrites. They don't have, have class, they just have this kind of super class. Now, achondrite means these are not chondrites. Primitive means, well, they are sort of similar to chondrites in that they are still quite primitive, like their bulk composition is, is, is chondrite-like or so, or in 
Acapulcaites and Lodronites in this clan here, in cases chondrules can occur. So there's a, a, a clear sort of relationship to chondrites, but it's not really chondrites. So this might be sort of early stages of um, planetesimal or asteroid differentiation, but not really differentiation, which is seen, for example, in uralites, um, having lots of olivine, pyroxene, and really looking like this, this could indicate some kind of early, early melt processes. So this is one group in Brachinite, and then there's uh, three Winonites, one AB and three CD. So this is from iron metride classification, but these are now not recognized as iron metrides, but, but as these kind of primitive achondrites, which are of intermediate pan body type. And for the last one, um, these are from differentiated pan bodies. Now, these really are um, pan bodies that are um, underwent differentiation into a core, into a mantle, such as, for example, here the moon. So these are really achondrites. There's nothing primitive about them anymore. And the moon, of course, has lots of various types of subtypes um, in the in meteorite record. Then there's also Mars, and Mars has these S and C chondrites, so shagotites, nucleides, and chassigny. There are then also other pyroxenites. And there's Vesta, and Vesta has the Howardites, Diogenites, and Eucrites, which are called HED chondrites. These are different types of sort of um, cumulates or so, so this is also a clear indication of um, differentiation going on. Palazites, which consist of, of metal, and inside these are lots of grains of olivine, clearly indicating differentiation likely in between core and mantle. So this is main group, eagle station, there are ungrouped. And then there are three individuals that also have metal and silicate, also might be a mesh from um, between core and mantle, but not as but not a clear metal as is seen in palisades. And finally, then there are the iron meteorites, which are subdivided here by different rare earth, uh, not by trace element patterns, and um, indicating various stages of fractional crystallization. So also very clear, this is the core of, of asteroids. And then in the end, there are related objects, not um, which you can find at the metrical bulletin or something like this, like maybe it's doubtful or some relict material, pseudometrites, something that's no longer um, regarded a metrite, and so on. So these are some not metrite classifications, but this is something that was maybe initially thought might be a metrite or has some relation to, to metrites and so on. So this is the, the classic traditional way of classifying metrites, which is widely used and highly useful.